Steve Ryder here, my selections on the second day of the 2021 Cheltenham Festival, where the first is in the 120, which is the Ballymore Novices Hurdle, where my selection is Bob Ollinger at 6-4. Despite the presence of the unbeaten Bear Gills in this field, this does look a three-horse race between Brave Band's game, Gerd de Manil, and the selection Bob Ollinger. He won a bumper over two mile two around the time of the festival last year, so it's a slight surprise to see this point-to-point -point winner start off over hurdles over two miles, let alone in a race against the champion bumper winner Fernie Hollow. That was a really close contest. Bob Ollinger only lost by a length that day with the pair putting miles clear of the remainder of the field. He then won as his odds of a one to eight suggested next time before really impressing me in the Lawless of Nace novice hurdle in January. He beat Blue Lord that day by six and a half lengths and that form was then boosted with that rival would have finished second in the Supreme yesterday if he hadn't fallen at the last. It was a really polished performance that day Envoy Allen won that race last year and skipped the Dublin Racing Festival to win this, and hopefully Bob Ollinger can do the same. Make sure you subscribe to Betting is for You TV as you will be able to access all those exclusive tips and also get notifications when new videos are released. Remember that those tips are not available on our website or on our Twitter feed. You can only find them by watching videos here at Betting is for You TV on YouTube. All you need to do to subscribe is to log in into your YouTube account. Click in the link in the post above and everything is completely free. Second race is the 155. It's the Brown Advisory Novices Chase where my selection comes in the without monkfish market and it's a clap to rear at 5-2. to two. The other five runners are closely matched in the market behind the Wheelie Mullins train favourite but preference goes to the Henry de Bromed trained seven-year-old. He's unbeaten over fences so far this season with two victories over three mile one at both Punchestown and Nace. His latest victory over Ascaria 10 received a form boost yesterday, with that rival finishing a close third in the National Hunt chase behind Galvin. Despite making all at the Dublin Racing Festival last time, I expect Monkfish to allow a clap de rear an easy lead in this race, and hopefully the pair go a good enough gallop to put the jumping of both the big breakaway and the inexperienced Dicky Diver under pressure. Sporting John looks the biggest danger to clap de rear in this market, following his impressive win in the Silly Isles Novices Chase at Sandown last time. But he has to prove that that wasn't a one-off, and preference goes to the more consistent Eclat de Rear, who has yet to finish out of the top two in his career so far. The first handicap of the day comes at 2.30. It's the Coral Cup when my selection is Thomas Darby at 12 to 1. Bookmakers are offering up to seven places on this race this year, and I'd be really disappointed to see Thomas Darby out of the frame. The Ollie Murphy trained eight-year-old is yet to finish out the first three in all of his 12 career runs so far. And he looks to have a lot in his favour in this race. He has course form when defeating Grey One winner Elixir de Nuts over hurdles earlier on in his career before finishing second in the Supreme Novices Hurdle at the festival a couple of years ago. The best performance of Thomas Darby's career, according to RPRs, came when winning the valuable Holloway's Handicap Hurdle at Ascot in January 2020. He defeated Song for Summer on that day by a length when giving his rival £7, and that form has been boosted since with his rival now rated £9 higher off a mark of 158. Following two satisfactory efforts in better races so far this season, Thomas Darby has now dropped down to a mark of 155, and it's also interesting that connections fit in with first-time G pieces. He has a form on a variety of grounds, so the dry and surface is no concern, and I expect it to run well with seven places on offer. The highlight of day two comes at 3.05 as the champion chase for my selection has put the kettle on at 17 to 2. Shaq and Passoir is definitely a worthy favourite for the race, but he still has to prove that he could produce his best at Cheltenham and therefore looks worth taking on at a short price. Last year's winner, Politolog, and his Ascot Conqueror first flow will ensure this is run at a good pace, and I think that will set up the race perfectly for put the kettle on. The Henry de Bomero trained mare has won all of her three starts over this course and distance, including when defeating the reopposing Rouge Vif and Notebook in the Arkle last year. She won the slur chase on a reappearance before finding Shaq and Passoir too good at Leperstown at Christmas. Cheltenham will suit her a lot better than Leperstown, but connections just needed to get a prep run into her before this race. Aidan Coleman continues his association with the mare, and the pair look the biggest danger to Shaq and Passoir if the favourite underperforms. Next race is the 340, which is the cross country chase, where my selection is last year's winner, Easy's Land, at 10 to 11. His 17 length victory in the race last season was his seventh in a row, and he showed in December 2019 that he can handle good to soft ground perfectly well, too. His preparation for the race this year hasn't gone to plan, as he only finished fourth over this course and distance in November, but it is worth remembering that he gave away a huge amount of weight 
in a handicap that day. Back off level weights, Easy Land should be able to hold strong claims of winning this race for a second year in a row, and the booking of Felix de Jarles over Jonathan Pluganu is also a huge positive. With doubts around the recent form of Tiger Roll, the main danger to the selection looks to be some neck for John McConnell, but he has £23 to find on ratings, and I expect the JP McManus owned Easy Land to get back on track in this race. 4.15 we have the Grand Annual where I'm taking two against the field, the first being Us and Them, the second being a shooter. Us and Them runs in the race this year off a mark of 147, which is a pound lower than when finishing third in the race last year. Finished second in a poor Arkle in 2019, showing his liking of the track, and he's often targeted at this meeting looking at his form figures. He's had a good break since his last run, and he should be able to outrun his odds of 14 to 1. Second is a shooter for Paul Nichols. He's drifted out for this race following his defeat at Fontwell, but I actually thought there was a lot to like about that run. It was his first run for 169 days. It was clearly just a pipe open for this, and Harry Cobden was a really easy one at the end. A fast run two miles looks at, two mile chase looks exactly what he wants. Chosen mate broke the bad record of novices in the race last year, so I'm hoping that a shooter can outrun his odds at 33 to 1. Final race on day two comes at 4.50. It's the champion bumper where my selection is Ramillies at 16 to 1. Willie Mullins has won the champion bumper a record 10 times in his career, but often wins the race with his apparent second or third string. He has a top two in the market this year with Kilcrook, the choice of Paul Townend, and also the chiefly part stud owned, Sir Gerhard, but preference goes to the Brian Cooper ridden Ramillies. The grey son of Shantou was an impressive winner at Leperstown at Christmas by 10 lengths, before getting too involved in a pace duel at the Dublin Racing Festival last time. On the face of it, he has a huge amount of improvement to show to reverse the form of Kilcrook, but I think the demands of this race are likely to suit the future stay of Ramillies. Willie Mullins has given him a positive mention in some recent interviews, and I think the better ground will suit him as well. There's four places on offer, and I feel this six-year-old is well worth backing to beat his better fancied stablemates. Make sure you subscribe to Betting This For You TV as you will be able to access all those exclusive tips and also get notifications when new videos are released. Remember that those tips are not available on our website or on our Twitter feed. You can only find them by watching videos here at Betting This For You TV on YouTube. All you need to do to subscribe is to log in into your YouTube account, click in the link in the post above and everything is completely free. Also, in the description below, you will find the links that will load the best suggestion in this video directly in your bet slip. In this way, you will save time as you don't have to find those selections in the bookmaker sites. You will ensure to back our tips correctly and also get the best possible odds as we always look for the bookmakers that have the best price for our tips. Remember though that uh, odds are always subject to change, so make sure you double check them before betting.